Hi, my name is Rich McHugh, and I'm going to go through this workshop uh, with you on Introduction to Virtual Reality, Augmented Reality, and 360 Tours for the University of Victoria Library's Digital Scholarship Commons. So here's an outline of what we're going to cover in the workshop today. So what are Virtual Reality, 360 Tours, and Augmented Reality? Virtual reality is an immersive experience where you put goggles over your eyes that completely block out the rest of the real world around you and you're immersed in a digital uh, 360 world. As, as you look around with the goggles on, you'll see different things just like you would uh, in, the, in the regular world without goggles on. Uh, one caution about VR goggles is that for some activities, people can get motion sickness. So things like roller coaster rides, you've got to be careful if you're prone to motion sickness. Here's an example of what a VR world can look like. Uh, this is using uh, Google Earth in the Oculus Rift. And let me just move forward here. You can see this person's flying around, and as they look around, you see different parts of the world. And we're going to go down to, I think, Seattle, Washington here in a second. And when you get right down, you get right, you go into Google Street View, which is sort of cool, so you can see what things look like as if you were standing on the ground, for example, which is what we're doing here. Anyways, this is a really immersive experience and people have a lot of fun exploring places they've been in the past or places that they would like to go at some point in the future. Here's another one. This is augmented reality. So a person's wearing goggles, but they're seeing a digital world and the real world around them. And I'll just play this. I'll mute the audio because the audio is not that important. But you can see this person's looking at the factory floor they can see the real objects there, plus they're uh, looking at potentially installing some new equipment and they're able to walk around and see how that equipment looks in place to see if there's going to be enough room or if the sight lines are the way they would like them to be uh, before spending money to purchase and install equipment. Another one here, this is an augmented reality but foam based rather than wearing a headset. and Again, I won't play the audio on this, but this is a school-based game that was created using tools so that people could, uh, participants could uh, see pictures and other things around them using their phones, though, rather than dedicated goggles. And this one's based on uh, World War II and decisions students at this particular high school had to make about going to war or not. And they used archival footage and other things to... Uh, bring to life that history that took place back in 1944. One other example here, this is in the uh, library. Um, we're using the Oculus Rift in the main area, and this is an application that an archaeology prof created. Of, uh, took a bunch of high-resolution pictures of an archaeology dig site in Spain, and then uh, creates it as an immersive experience for his students so that they can see what it would be like at the dig site and figure out where would they start digging, where they should probably need to be careful uh, for uh, potentially having things that they could disturb or break if they do start digging. So a great experience. Ideally, they'd all go to Spain. That wasn't possible, so this is a, a nice second best experience for this class. So a nice thing about 360 video is that it's quick and relatively easy to create. Uh, easier to create than those immersive experiences like that archaeology dig site, for example. They're also quite easy to distribute because you can distribute 360 videos on YouTube. And videos like this tend to give a heightened spatial understanding and immersion in whatever subjects being discussed or place being visited for that matter. Here's a couple of examples. This one's of Finnerty Gardens uh, on campus at UVic. And you can see here I'm on a tour, going walking through like I'm doing a tour. And you can see that with my mouse, I can drag around. There I am, walking through the garden. So 
So interactive 360 tours using static 360 pictures uh, are great for interactive narratives and for displaying multiple layers of information, not only the 360 still shot, but you can embed videos often depending on the tool, put in, uh, give the people choice about clicking on uh, different directions to go in to look at different parts of the, the tour. And again, a heightened spatial understanding and immersion. Here's one uh, 360 tour that was done by a student group in the Faculty of Education, and they did an art installation in this building that was going to be torn down. You can see here, uh, they also made this tour with using 360 still photographs. And I can walk around and look around, and they've got little objects to click on to get additional information. I've also got this dollhouse view. So you can look around and say, I'm going to go straight to the upstairs of the house here. And you can see, again, very art-like, but immersive, especially given that this house no longer exists anymore. This is the only, um, the only, only way you can experience this art exhibit now is through this 360 uh, experience. And you can do this in a web browser as well as with virtual goggles like Oculus Rift, for example. Here's one that we created using the 360 pictures and some open source software. Uh, the software is called Mar Marzipano, and we took these pictures of the library with the camera that we loan out from the music and media desk in the library, which uh, students, faculty, and staff can borrow. You can see you can get quite a good experience. There's some information about different places here. Let's go to the uh, let's go to the 3D printer room so you can see our 3D printer area here. Anyways, and lastly, there's the Google Earth narrative map. This one isn't as flexible. It's more of a linear storytelling. But it's quite cool in that you can use Google Maps to set the location, and then you can use two-dimensional pictures that you embed in it to, um, to look more closely at things. So for example, I'll click on, this is where I did a study leave about 11, 12 years ago now. And you can see we can scroll around Google Maps, but there are pictures up here that I took and put into the, the story and along with some text. Then I can click on the next place and we see where it's located on the map and then I've got pictures and some narrative. Another place, the Red River, so we see what it looks like here. There's the Red River there and then pictures. So it can do a pretty good job of telling a story, especially a place-based story that you can see on maps. So multimedia learning principles for AR, VR, and 360 tours. Um, some of the, the positives about, uh, about AR, VR, and 360 tours from a multimedia learning principle experience. So for example, the multimedia principle, where people learn better from words and pictures, that definitely is AR, VR, and 360. The next one is the modality principle, where people learn better from graphics and narration than graphics and printed text. Again, we really see that uh, in the video in particular. Next one is redundancy principle. People learn better when the same information is not presented in more than one format. And done correctly, AR, VR, and 360 can uh, follow the red redundancy principle. The next one is the spatial contiguity principle. People learn better when the corresponding words and pictures are presented near rather than far from each other. And again, if we're labeling 360 pictures, that's a great example of that. The next one is the temporal contiguity principle. People learn better when the corresponding words and pictures are presented simultaneously rather than successively. And again, uh, AR, VR, and 360 can do that very well. And the last one is segmenting principle. People learn better when a multimedia message is presented in learner paced segments rather than a continuous unit. And especially with the 360 tours, because you can break down the tour into different perspectives that people can uh, move through at their own pace, it really helps segment things out so that 
again, learners can move at their own pace and focus on what's most important to them. And then from a negative perspective, uh, the coherence principle where people learn better when extraneous material is excluded rather than included, especially if the 360 tour and video, there can be extraneous material if you're focusing or if you're wanting your learners to focus only on one part of the video. Uh, in a 360 video, they could be looking all over the place. So that is something that you'd have to keep in mind depending on the type of video and the type of instruction you're wanting to do. Just to reiterate, the library does loan out 360 cameras uh, and uh, photo tools like tripods. So if you'd like to borrow the library 360 camera, you can just email request at uvic.ca. So now that I've gone through that, let's get started on one of the hands-on activities, either the uh, 360 tour with Marzipano or the Google Earth narrative map. Enjoy.